there is something within us that loves a ruin. That which once was grand is now laid low. A ruin is the melancholy of human life as visual metaphor. Surely time brings us all low. So the tragic beauty of a ruin tells us the true story of our own lives. Karen Kunkel is not an ordinary person. She is an artist with a grand vision. And if she gets her way, a classic Philadelphia ruin will live again and bring the city together in unimaginable ways. Why am I here? John Thornton, you are here today because it's my pleasure to tell you that we will be building a museum of contemporary art on North Broad Street that is interactive and overnight is going to connect all of the arts organizations in Philadelphia to each other. And where might this be? That will be in the Divine Lorraine on North Broad Street. You're kidding. No. <laughs> the Divine Lorraine needs help and Philadelphia artists needs help and the two things can help out each other. Philadelphia Salon's pretty good at finding empty real estate and putting it to work for local artists and so we're going to do it with the biggest real estate in town. <laughs> Karen founded and directs the Philadelphia Salon out of the dilapidated Matthew Baird Mansion on North Broad Street, a block above the Divine Lorraine Hotel. She invited representatives from several of the city's arts organizations to the Salon's monthly dinner. Usually, the topic of conversation at these dinners is art, but Karen used this dinner to announce her vision to transform the Divine Lorraine Hotel into a contemporary art museum and community space, a project she calls The Return of the Beautiful. You come up with these really great ideas, and they're not little ideas, they're big ideas. Well, Philadelphia can't support another little idea. There's just too many. What Philadelphia needs is a big idea that encompasses all of the little ideas and brings them together to be one big happy family inside of a big idea. Matthew Baird was the head of Baldwin locomotives back in the 19th century. He became one of the richest men in the world and a prime supporter of the arts in Philadelphia. Karen found out that this man's great-grandson, also named Matthew Baird, is a brilliant architect out of New York City, and she invited him to get involved. Hi, I'm Matthew Baird. Uh, I'm here tonight to present ideas about the Divine Lorraine uh, and the idea of the Philadelphia Salon uh, taking over the Divine Lorraine and bringing pictures uh, to that amazing ruin. You know, when you're thinking about making a, a building for contemporary art, I think it's, you got to think of some other uh, ideas. You know, th this was a hotel that needs to be opened up. We need to bring more light into the center of the building. Lou Kahn uh, talked about the power of ruins, right, and how people respond to, to ruined architecture. And I think Gordon Matta Clark, in his own time, had a different take on that concept of cutting through buildings that were soon to be demolished that were in ruin. And when I think about ruins and preserving them, I actually don't think about Colonial Williamsburg. I think that there's something much more powerful about stabilizing this building in its ruin and then having a juxtaposition of a very new vitrine or vessel to house the art that sits within the Divine Lorraine. This is a project in Madrid where you have this highly enclosed space uh, relating to an existing ruin that is stabilized. The Caixa Forum, also in Madrid, is an example of a masonry building that was preserved for the arts, and yet it's a state-of-the-art enclosed facility. Thinking about ways to activate the Divine Lorraine, we thought about PS1. It's a great reinvention of an abandoned building. And that space is activated by all kinds of events. This is the smash dance party that they have every summer on Thursday nights. So ideas like that coming to bear on the Divine Lorraine, bringing in uh, contemporary artists, giving them a room, allowing them to transform it. 
So the concept is to relate this idea of a vessel for art and the idea of a ruin. The interest becomes how do they relate to each other. When you make a state-of-the-art storage facility for art, you have to have humidity control, temperature control, UV control. And if you ever hope to borrow art from significant collectors and from significant institutions, you have to meet all kinds of guidelines for security and insurance purposes. It's probably not practical to go into that massive masonry building and try to make airtight all of those hundreds and hundreds of window openings. But what you can do is actually preserve it in its ruin and bring in a vitrine, a little bit like the Beinecke Library in Yale, uh, of a highly conditioned uh, vitrine of, of art storage and art exhibit, uh, and locate that within the building. So we would actually build a new vessel within the Divine Lorraine for this purpose. In 1948, an African-American minister went into this hotel and was told he would not be served a meal. Fine, he said, and the next day came back with $485,000 in cash and bought it outright. It was an ongoing concern for many years. I have friends who used to go in for meals. It was open to all, but you had to show great decorum or they'd boot you out. Eventually, the Divine Lorraine fell on hard times. A succession of developers acquired and then did nothing with the place. As I was filming it, a homeless guy told me he used to squat on the top floor. He had a great view of all parts of the city. Through his window, he used to enjoy the fireworks down on Delaware Avenue. Matthew's plan for inserting a state-of-the-art contained vessel inside the structure mirrors Karen's idea. In her lecture, she mentions that this part of North Philadelphia has become a black hole. But by transforming the Divine Lorraine into a vessel for art, she hopes to stabilize and bring back to life this tragic ruin that is her neighborhood. But is it possible? I talked to one of Karen's guests, an admirable guy who in 1999 just barely missed becoming Philadelphia's first Republican mayor in several generations. My name is Sam Katz and I uh, am the CEO of USA 250 and a documentarian making a film about the history of Philadelphia. And I came here about seven months ago, met Karen Kunkel and she organized a small group of artists to talk about how the arts community might want to celebrate uh, the nation's 250th anniversary. And I remember watching Karen going, who is this person? And she was extremely impressive. Uh, she invited me to see the studio where one of her friends was producing the crashed airplane on Lenfest Plaza next to the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts and I knew that I was in the presence of a person with a lot of gumption and a lot of ambition and also a big heart. Do you think there's any hope that this is actually gonna occur? Hope is different than uh, an execution. <laughs> <laughs> the hope is a, a burning light. There's a lot of hurdles. I'm 62 years old. I don't remember a time when that building wasn't empty and people were talking about how to reuse it. But I think the energy that Karen and her associates bring to a project like this, the redevelopment of North Broad Street, a, a different attitude that pervades all parts of Philadelphia, the can-do attitude that I think is here, um, make the prospects certainly brighter, uh, albeit the hurdles no less high. But Karen and Matthew remain undeterred. Well, is this even remotely possible? As Eleanor Roosevelt put it, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. So I totally believe that the return of the beautiful is possible and probable and already underway. The tortoise and the hare. Everybody else who wants the divine Lorraine so far has been this guy and we're this guy. And that's why we're gonna win.